I've been using the new Control 4 Halo remote for a few weeks now, and I think it's time to finally make a bit of a review video. Um, I did, when I when I first got the remote, Dan DiCarlo from Audio Vision and I did a long live stream basically setting it up, checking it out, putting it through its paces. I'd recommend you check that out as well for some longer form content. I'm ready now to give some more kind of succinct thoughts about using the remote. I've primarily used it here in the living room. I have taken it down to the theater a couple of times in the last few weeks, but mostly it's been controlling the living room, the LG 83 inch G2 and the audio system, Apple TV, and some Kaleidoscape as well. I would say overall, I am very pleased with this remote. This is a significant step up both from the SR260 that came much before it and the, the more newer or the relatively newer Control 4 Neo remote. This thing I think beats the pants off of both of them. I think the, the fit and finish of this, the materials, the nice soft touch back, it feels heftier, it feels better put together. I think it feels more premium than an SR260, and the Neo was just objectively a failure, um, as I've alluded to many times here. I really like the return of a bunch of additional hard buttons, and this thing just feels really good in the hand. It has some weight, but it's not too heavy. It is very big though, I will say. So if it, holding it in my hand, we can see there's like a little bit of a kind of a bump out here, right about this level halfway vertically through the remote. But I find that like my index finger fits really well in that spot giving me access to the, the thumb control uh, up, down, left, right, and enter, and the transport controls right underneath it. And despite it feeling very large, if you look at kind of how my hand sits, it actually braces my hand almost all the way down to the bottom of the remote. So it's got a nice kind of sturdy feel in the hand. When you have to get to the taller buttons, you can shift up very easily. When you need to get to the lower buttons, you can kind of shift down. So one-handed operation, I think, is, is pretty solid. I do wonder about the touch model, though. The fact that the touch model does not have the number keys and is a relatively or pretty significantly shorter remote, that might be a little more wieldy. I'm curious to get one in my hands, use it for a little while, you know, and, and kind of see how it goes overall. That said, I have no problem at all recommending this, I think, for any Control 4 user. It is available at a much more cost-effective price, I think, over what the touch MSRP is going to be. I believe the touch is going to run on the order of $1,000. Whereas this thing isn't quite half, but it's a good bit less, a few hundred dollars less than the actual touch model. I'll reiterate again that for all intents and purposes, functionally speaking, uh, except for a, a few kind of key items and maybe some future things that may be coming, this really is an SR260. We effectively have most of the same buttons kind of available that are on the 260. You program them in the drivers the same way. And I will make separate videos, I think, coming up specifically how I have this set up both for my Apple TV and for the Kaleidoscape. I don't want this video to run too long with all of that extra kind of technical detail. But suffice to say, I'm making heavy use of the transport controls again. Some of the extra hard button capability that this thing has over the Neo. I find it so much simpler to use in that regard. No more jumping between all these different touch screen menus. Um, that, that really was a very kludgy way I think to use the Neo. I can just hit the buttons that I want to do things immediately. I can feel them, it's tactile, and it just works really well. I would say also they did a good job kind of laying out the buttons. It feels like a lot of buttons. There's definitely a lot of buttons on this remote. And that was kind of the first feedback that I got from the family as well. The kids and my wife was like, wow, there's a lot of buttons on that remote. It may actually be kind of intimidating again to use relative to how few buttons are on the Neo. But in any case, the, the tactile around the, kind of the D-pad, the up, down, left, right, there's a little nub on the five, so you know right when you're in the middle uh, of the number pad at the bottom. Stuff like that really just works. We've got differentiation in, in kind of the ovals of the three programmable buttons to the buttons underneath them. So row to row, things change. After you use this thing for a little while, it becomes really very intuitive to kind of know where you're at, know where your thumb is at, and again, not having to look at it, not having to touch and, and navigate screens and deal with all the stuff that the Neo makes you do, I'm finding using this to be just so much preferable. And I think, again, I found a really good button mapping of functionalities, both for the Apple TV and the Kaleidoscape, that leaves me able to use this very, very effectively. The voice capability is now awesome. I no longer have to go to the Apple TV remote to use Siri commands. I would say this is in its infancy, though. There's uh, Right now, it basically does Apple and Siri. And that's really it. We'll see how much more powerful this thing gets maybe later on when it supports Amazon Alexa and Xfinity. And I, I presume over time we will see all of the major voice platforms end up be supported through this. There's a lot of room for improvement, I think. 
uh, and a lot of room to add features and capabilities as time goes on. Again, I like the premium feel. I like the tactileness. I like the way the buttons, they're, they're firm, not too firm, but, but they feel good with a good click. I just turned the fireplace on behind me. A good click when you press them. Now, the programmable buttons I have set up here kind of mixing between rooms. There are, th there are some things missing. For example, on the home list, there's still no comfort. Even a few weeks later since I first set this up, there really hasn't been a new software push, no real new features or anything added to it, no new settings or, or anything since the initial live stream setup. So we're waiting for comfort controls, we're waiting for a few other things to come in here. In the interim, I just went ahead and made myself uh, a fireplace button to turn that on and turn that off here in the room. Now I have, it was recommended to me actually in the comments of another video that these programmable buttons are supposed to get more capability involving perhaps the ability to access like sub menus and kind of sub controls. I don't think that that capability is available, at least not yet. I don't see any way to program it and I don't see any way basically to like actuate sub menus. I will say though, if they are able to add that, that really kind of, I think, elevates the non-touch remote to be much more functional in my regard. Because one, one of the controls that I actually have set up here for the theater is an aspect button. And so that button allows me to essentially kind of on a, um, on a sequence, change my projector lens, mo lens installation modes, lens memory settings between like 69, 185 to one, 235 to one. And instead, if I could press that button and have a little bit of a flyout happen where I could go up and down and pick the specific one that I wanted in a sub menu, that would be glorious. So I hope that's coming. Again, I saw it referenced in another video but I don't see the way, I don't see a way to do the functionality right now. If that other video was just conjecture, well, it's a darn good idea. So control four, if you're watching this, give me, give me the ability to have a little fly out sub menu with selectable, op, programmably selectable options on it. And this thing will just be killer. In some ways also, I kind of do prefer not having the touch screen just because then nobody has a reason to put their dirty fingers all over it. So the screen is always looking nice and fingerprint free nice color resolution and the sharpness of the screen is really nice and a, and a marked improvement I think as well over the Neo. When you go into the watch menu we still get all the specific icons for our devices, a real Apple TV, a real Kaleidoscape, so the iconography and the visual aspects and all of that <clears throat> are still there. Battery life, so this is the one that kind of surprised me especially for the non-touch version of the remote is you can basically watch that battery drain over the course of a day. I, I would say on average without charging and normal use, which is a little bit of daytime use, perhaps more so just evening use, pick it up to turn the fireplace on, things like that. This thing only lasts about three days before it's low enough that you wouldn't want to leave it off the charger and try to use it maybe in that fourth day. I actually did do that. And then one of the evenings, boom, it, it went down on me. This isn't a week long off the charger thing. You're probably better off just making sure that you keep the charger somewhere accessible and then every night or you know at the end of every day when you're done using it just put it on the charger always have it capped off full up for the next day and and you'll be good to go otherwise you're going to be charging it anyway every every second or third day uh, regardless it makes me a little nervous actually for the touch model because i would presume with the touch screen and, and the other stuff that's going on in the touch remote that thing's probably going to suck more battery than this one does and the touch remote is smaller. If the less energy using remote uh, with potentially a bigger battery drains this fast, I would be, I, I'm very initially concerned, let's say, about maybe how the touch will, will pan out, but we'll see how that goes in practice when I actually get a hold of one. I also do like the fact that they, the, that they moved the uh, power button, the room off button to the top. I think it makes for a really great symmetry of the buttons versus kind of having just one like floating power button. This is kind of ingenious. I don't think I've ever seen a remote with a button on the top, but for a room off, that's basically perfect. So kudos to the engineer or the designer that thought about doing that. I think that's a great placement for that. And I think that works great to get it off the main face of the remote. One of the other things that kind of really plagued my use of the Neo is its, its connection, basically its Wi-Fi connection. A lot of times I would go to pick up a Neo. It wouldn't make connections. I'd have to wait for it. It would have to get back on the network and all that. And I can happily say that I've never had a problem so far with any of the connectivity or the stability of the connectivity with this remote. Every time I've gone to pick it up and use it, it's on, it's available, it's connected, and there's no, there's no waiting, uh, there's no frustration or, or anything like that. So I think across the board, Control 4 really has done uh, some excellent work here. 
some excellent implementation. We've got some features missing and we've got the ability to add some more really cool stuff to this going forward. And I'm still learning how to navigate a few of the things specifically, like what they call sessions and, and sometimes getting up and down through the different menus that are available on the screen itself using the D-pad can feel a little heavy, but I, I absolutely give this thing, I think one of my highest recommendations. I just hope that it holds up over time. This is an initial review and we'll see if they're able to kind of, if it's able to keep working stably and we get more features and more capabilities and all of that over the next few months. And they can really deliver and make this thing even more stellar than it already is. So I would say if you've been sitting on SR260s for a long time and you kind of want to step up your remote game, you want something that looks, acts, has some forward thinking features and is just basically a bit more of a premium experience. Although in many ways, you know, similar functionality to the SR260, go for these. If you've got Neos, well, maybe you want to wait and see how the touch pans out for this versus the non-touch. If you do want the touch capabilities to replace the touch capabilities of a Neo, well, then you will be waiting for the other remote. I'm still mixed. I'm liking this thing enough that I think maybe, maybe I might not even consider the touch, especially for the much more expensive price mark. I think that this can fulfill my needs pretty nicely. Although I will comment as well that at least for the devices that I use, I almost never touch the number pad. I thought it would be cool to have the number pad back again, but it doesn't do anything for the Apple TV. And really on the Kaleidoscape, the only thing the number pad really lets you do effectively is T9 in your actual movie list to alphabetically jump to different letters of the alphabet. But things that you can do on the info and on the color buttons, at least for the Kaleidoscape, are replaceable by programming them to other buttons up above. So we'll see. I'm really curious how I will feel when I have the both models side by side. We'll do a full face off. I'll do a separate conversation and review. If, you're, if, you're, if you really don't care about the touch and you really don't want to spend the extra money, I would move on these things. This is, this is really great. This is a really great product and a much improved product from Control 4. And of course, if you're looking to buy these, I would recommend go with my friend, Dan DiCarlo, Audio Vision. He's been on the channel and um, his contact information is available in a bunch of the videos. So if you have any questions about this, sound off in the comments. What else can I show you? What else can I, can I talk about? Are there any elements that I left out of kind of this more detailed take on the Control 4 Halo remote? Otherwise, please do all that regular YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, leave those comments, share the video, and if you'd like to support the channel, I've got super thanks, I've got Amazon affiliate links, we've got channel memberships, donations, and more. Check all that out down below. Thanks so much for watching. Check out the, the longer detailed live stream if you would like, where we broke this thing open, fresh out of the box, and set it up from scratch in my system, and look forward to some more specific videos coming about using this remote with a few specific devices. Thanks so much for watching and coming back for more home theater discussion and fun.